He's got a charm and an appeal you can't deny. He's just your everyday dumb guy. Good evening and welcome back to another episode of What's So Funny. I am Guy McPherson. This week, our guest... Dumb guy? Not, well, I mean, who's to say, really? It is, I'm going to take a run at this name. I am a professional. Yeah. Not, not here, but, I mean, just stylistically. Right. And I, I would have found out the pronunciation of your name, but I wanted to do it on the air. Yeah. Because I've always said Fred Juwaniak. But yeah. that's wrong, isn't it? Well, yeah, but it's we pronounce it Iwanik. Iwanik. Who's yeah. we? Your family. Well, my family. Yeah. But then my dad was up uh, in Vernon where he, he was looking into some old family and stuff, and they're like, uh, one, we spell it wrong and we say it wrong. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> there's a U in there that like that apparently isn't supposed to be there. Yeah, because that's what yeah. threw me off, because I always thought, okay, so I was wrong, but I thought it was Iwaniak, yuck, yeah. but then yeah. I see it's U-I, so then I thought it was yuan yuick Yeah, I But know. neither's right. Neither's right. So I, I probably don't even, I don't even, yeah. And Ewan makes sense because, you know, EW yeah. usually means Ewan. So I, I don't know. I, it doesn't matter. As long as the check gets to the right place, I don't right. care how people pronounce. I actually got introduced uh, once um, as uh, Jeff Eunuch. And uh, <laughs> and I thought that was uh, that was the best uh, mix-up ever. Well, you know what? Ever. That's probably a better show business name. It probably is. <laughs> Jeff it's funny. Even my dad said, you should probably change the name. I was like, ah, I can't be bothered. Back when you were uh, starting out. Yeah. And that was uh, when? Well, gosh, how long has it been? Like, uh, I've been in it. I haven't had a regular job for close to 20 years, 18, 18 years. Wow. Something like that. Yeah. We should say, for those that don't know, they might know you as Hank Yarbo from Corner Gas. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're probably going, Fred who? Fred Ewanick? Or they what? might know you as Dan for mayor. Yeah. Dan. Dan. Shortly lived Dan for mayor. Shortly yeah. lived. But you know what? It's on YouTube. <laughs> Is it on the YouTube? Well, some episodes I saw tonight, yeah. Oh, really? And uh, I remember at the time liking that show. I liked it a lot. You know, I especially liked... Uh, Especially, I really liked first season, and when uh, the guys were telling me about the show before we got going, I really liked the idea of it. You know, this sort of uh, comedic soap opera was how it was set up mm-hmm. in first in first season, and then second season, uh, and I, I I never got the the inside scoop, but my feeling was that they got notes from the the network, and they're like, yeah, we just kind of want to make it more funny. Mm-hmm. So second season was funnier, uh, but I I always liked that idea of first season, this sort of like you know. Every episode would have start with a previously on Dan for mayor, uh-huh. you know, and like yeah, have yeah. that underline like dun, that was done. That was kind of ahead of its time then. Well, that's what I mean. Like I, now every show's like that. Yeah, you, you can't know, just sit down and watch a show in the middle of the season and go, "I'm going to get into this." You got to start from the beginning. Yeah, I I really like that idea, and I I kind of wish we got a, a chance to do that. And uh, I wish I had one more year because I think we could have really found uh, found an audience if. But ah, I don't get to make those decisions. I just show up and pretend. Yeah. You pre- mm. You're a, a professional pretender. I am a professional pretender, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know... Uh, I get paid to lie, basically. You but. know where I first saw you? Uh-oh. Where? Uh-oh. Well, I don't know. I just assume it's something bad. Whenever somebody says... When, actually, whenever somebody greets me, hey, I'm like, oh, God, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> no, I bet you most people, it's corner gas. Although you're incognito now with your beard. Oh, yeah. This is just, see, this is great because I haven't been on the TV for a while. I've been doing voice work, and, and I love it because I hate shaving. Mm. So I'm, I've, uh, I'm growing. I, I don't know when you stop because I, I don't want to be a, not, not that I got anything against hipsters, but I don't want to be that old guy there who goes <laughs> like, oh, God, here's another old guy trying to be a cool hipster, you know. But uh, Right. I think uh, maybe half an inch. Uh, uh, more? That's probably where, no, that's where you stop. At half an inch. Oh, okay. Half an inch is is when I should stop. Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay, all right. Because now right. the beards are several inches. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. so I, I don't. I, I'm yeah, I always that. think you always look like you're in a cult if you have one of those beards. Yeah, or like, uh, you know, a ZZ Top cover band or something. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, where I first saw you was uh, there was a CBC like a little short film competition. Oh. Uh, and I entered, and I didn't win. Oh, I'm sorry. But the, uh, the winning 
entry. Fluffy? There was, the, yeah, was that it? It was about a spider? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was, uh, there was a reading, and you were the star of the reading. The and, star, yeah. And I went to <laughs> that. Star, and was star. that ever made? Yeah. Oh, it was. It okay. actually turned out pretty good. Maybe Boy, I, I saw it. I don't remember. I had forgotten about that. But yeah, that was... Uh... I think mine was better, though. <laughs> which one was yours? Oh, you were you were on the uh, judge judging? No, no. But what? Oh, I guess oh, no, I, would, I, was, I thought it would have been at the readings. No, oh, you no. didn't even get. Oh, okay, because yeah. there was a couple at the readings, wasn't there? It's been, it was a long time ago. It was a that long was, time. I think uh, back in the bowels of the CBC building, right? We we did the reading way down in maybe, the basement. Yeah. Like uh, it was in the late nineties. Oh my God! Is that right? So yeah, it, it would have been in, in the nineties. Yeah. Yeah, way before Corner Guest. But I obviously you remembered you. Well, that's a, in a good way, I hope. Sure, Not like, yeah. Really? They're giving it to this schmuck? <laughs> giving it what? Oh, the the you know the winning uh, the winning thing, the winning the fluffy thing. Oh yeah, but did you write it? No, but you know, I thought you would hold it against me. Oh like, no, you know, no, the, you're you're the talent. The talent, yeah. You just came in. You probably if I if mine had won, you would have come in for that. I think talent gets too much credit sometimes, and also too uh, not uh, too much of the criticism as well. Because mm-hmm. like so, you're front and center. Yeah, but in reality, we're just we're literally in we're just kind of really talking props, right? We're at the whim of <laughs> we're at the whim of all these other people you're a professional pretender yeah. and you're a talking pro I'm talking pro well yeah i'll probably get yelled at from some <laughs> fellow thespians uh, but i don't really believe that but when you break it down that's like our job like right i mean you don't want to be too self-important no i don't think especially when you're pretending for a living i don't want, i don't want to depreciate the value of entertainment because it serves a purpose in society sure. yeah. but you know we're not we're not saving lives. Or, well, maybe, maybe. Actually, that's not true. I've, I've heard like people watch a program and it sort of uplifts them and maybe gets them out of a funk. So maybe you sort of save lives at some point. But realistically, we're not throwing our bodies in front of a bullet to save a life. We're, no. We're just, you know, hey, forget about your worries for a half hour. And You mentioned it's been 20 years since you had a real job. No, no. Yeah. You, did you say real job or did I just I might say have said, that? I might have said real job. I forget five minutes. I've taken too many pucks to the head. I honestly, <laughs> I'm like a goldfish. <laughs> like, you know, if I, as soon as I turn, if I turned around now and saw you and turned around, I was like, oh, oh, you're a nice looking fellow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my wife said the first question should be, are you dumb in real life? Uh, I think you just answered that. Yeah, I'm probably, d- I don't know. I, I, no, I, you don't. I, I don't. I don't believe I'm dumb. I actually, um, I think I have a, I'm not book smart. Like, I get really uh, uh, jealous of people like, um, well, pe- people that are um, very intellectual and smart and have a good wit. I, I get jealous because I don't have that. But I, I, I believe I have a, a decent level of common sense. Like I, right. you know, I'm not street smart. Don't get me wrong. Like I couldn't survive on the street. Yeah. But like I know enough to cross the street when you know <laughs> this doesn't feel right. You know, I'm not just going. Oh, we're going to walk into it anyway. Right. So you're the Einstein of knowing when to cross the street. Yeah, I'm just smart enough to realize I'm not that smart. <laughs> well, you play a great dumb guy. Well, that's thanks. well. I mean, you did on Corner Gas. Uh, the guy on Dan for Mayor was, uh, I mean, a little more, yeah, average, regular, average Joe, regular, yeah, 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 is the technical term, I think, average maybe. Joe, and then yeah. uh, the other thing, uh, the guy who was uh, in the studio before, I said you'd be a guest. He said, oh, I, he was in this movie about parking. Oh, the delicate art of parking. Yeah, yeah. that's, and, and he uh, said I thought it was going to be terrible. I watched it. And I loved it. Yeah, it I, I, I get that a lot. People stumble across it and they. They're uh, they're surprised by it, and it was uh, Trent Carlson was the director writer, and uh, that was that's one of the things I'm still most proud of that movie. Actually. Really, it was my first ever lead role for one thing, mm-hmm. and it's the thing when I watch it, I feel like it's the thing I've I did my best pretending in. <laughs> <laughs> this is <laughs> gonna be a theme. Throughout the, the yeah, hour. yeah, it's the thing furthest from me that I've ever done. So when I watch okay. it, I don't. I mean, I I think every character I ever play will always have bits of like you know, mannerisms and bits sure. of me that sort of benefit the character that work. But that one has the least of me of anything I've ever done. I saw the movie, but this again was like two thousand, two thousand. Yeah, it was early two thousands. You know what? We did that. It actually, I shot that the year before Corner Gas. It came out during the first season of Corner Gas, maybe the second season. I can't remember now. Mm. Um, Nancy Robertson was in it, of yes, course. She was, she was yeah. hilarious. Because in everybody it. from Corner Gas is a, always works together. <laughs> it felt like that way for a little while. It did. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, I, 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 I hear that every once in a while. I was like, oh, I said, what was it? I did a. I wasn't there for the screening. Um, uh, it was those uh, t- um, Telus um, 
Oh, oh, why? See, I am terrible at remembering things. Uh, it was this. Uh, no, I'm not helping. No, I'm no. Just letting you yeah, flounder. you just let me <laughs> flounder. Like ever since I made you say my name, um, and uh, they had a screening for this uh, thing. Story Hive. Ah, yay, I did it. Hey. Story Hive. I got it. Okay. And uh, they had the screenings, and I ended up being in two of them, and, and one of the guys was, I was like, how'd the screening go? He said, it was, oh, great. But some guy screamed out. He's like, oh, God, does 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 Fred Owanachuk have to be in everything? <laughs> Owanachuk. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, actually, I do. I got to pay the bills. Like, come yeah. on. That's right, because I remember Corner Gas, and then at the same time, Robson Arms. Yeah, that, that uh, there was a period, too, and I, I was like, hopping from i was doing uh robson arms and i wasn't in every episode of robson arms it was more like vignette right so i was like i think maybe i was in five or six episodes i love my character and i love that show i love working on that show uh and then i was doing it and with gabrielle miller and and so it was just me <laughs> Mille, that's it from corner gas just the okay. two of us right. and then brent and nancy made like a cameo and appearance uh, okay. in one, one, one yeah. episode but uh the, it's Canadian uh, television. We don't make as much as our American friends, so we have to we have to work a lot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You don't need to make excuses. Well, I, I feel like I have to apologize. Well, we apology accepted. Okay. Our, our guest this week is Freddie Iwanek. 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 There you go. Freddie Iwanek. And uh, the show is What's So Funny, station CFRO 100.5 FM. I am Guy McPherson. Fred is an actor of note. Not a stand-up comedian. No. No, never did it. Never tried it. No, well, no, I did a little improv. Did you? Yeah, my mom had a car. I, I tried out for theater sports way, way back, and I didn't get in. And then my mom had, I had friends who did it, and then my mom had a coffee shop, and uh, I was like, screw it, I'm going to do my own improv night. <laughs> yeah? How did that go? <laughs> Uh, just solo improv or you, you and your friends? No, I had a couple. Just me. <laughs> <laughs> can I have a can I have a room in the house? <laughs> Going around table to table. Yeah. Uh, it's close up improv. <laughs> yeah. It was, I think it was okay. I don't know. People showed up. Okay. But you didn't keep up with it. No, I, you know, I have this, I, like I went to theater school and I realized I have a lot of, at the time I didn't know what it was, but it's anxiety about being on live stage and like it like terrible would stress mm. you know debilitating anxiety and I, I would just be a wreck once i got up there it was all right but all the time before it was just murder mm. and uh it was like that too when i was doing improv and uh, i should I sh- when i was doing improv at my mom's coffee shop <laughs> like i wasn't doing professional improv but uh as soon as you get a laugh from somebody that was kind of addictive right so right. it kind of it was sort of worth it. So you did uh, you did plays throughout college, university. Yeah, I, I mean I took or theater school. I t- well, Douglas College. I took theater at Douglas okay. College. And, That's in New West. Yeah, yeah, and I uh, I found every excuse I could not to do the shows because <laughs> I didn't really want to do them, but you had to to get your credit. Like so what I, kind of shows are we talking about? I love theater. Yeah, I love watching theater. I just yeah, that's what I mean when I say yeah, I yeah. Theater. I don't yeah, doing it is like a whole other thing. Like that's like you got to geez, like and, and you as soon as you're ready to go on, you're like my mind especially. I'm just a blank. It's like I don't, I have no <laughs> idea what I'm supposed to say. And and you you're know, a lead. Yeah, it's re- really rare where you do miss a line, but you're always able to kind of work it back in. Like it, it's always okay. Like it always ends up working out. Like you, you remember your line. Yeah. But like just before, uh, I, I would just be in a cold sweat it's like oh i have no idea yeah because what if yeah. you're thinking what yeah, if yeah. i just freeze out there and i uh, there was one time there's no take two there is no take two there's no oh sorry can we uh can we actually <laughs> do you mind can we go back to the, uh, take it from uh, yeah. yeah um but uh it always seemed to work out but there was one time i had a laughing fit we uh, bisky what was the name of the show bisky and the banished cavaliers it was it was a terrible production of a good play i don't know i play. don't know if the play was good i couldn't tell you because i'd never heard of it yeah. And I haven't, whenever I bring it up, nobody, the person I talk yeah, to hasn't, heard, hasn't heard of it. And there was this big sword fight in the middle of it. And half of us had wooden swords and the other half had metal swords. <laughs> so there's like chips of, you know, wood. people were falling <laughs> off the stage. It was, I wish, I wish it was filmed because it would be a wicked good laugh on YouTube right now. <laughs> like it was just. Oh. So it was a serious kind of play? Yeah, it was like a period piece. Like Epic. there was all these fancy yeah. costumes and swords and. And you just broke down laughing. Well, but yeah, before uh, before one show, I I just me and this one guy, we just had it. We, just before we were going, we had this laughing fit, and we couldn't do our bit. We would just kept turning away and just ended up walking off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> 
Did you uh, did you graduate from theater? No school. No, no. I at I was Douglas a, College. Yeah, I, was, I got asked to leave actually. For what reason? I wasn't I wasn't very good. <laughs> oh, that, they can do that. <laughs> no, it was I. It was um, I I kind it was kind of my fault, but also I did try to fix it. So I I, I goofed around a lot. Yeah, and like, uh, it, during productions or during rehearsals, during, during class, like during class. First, first class of the day was like, you know, eight in the morning. It was voice and movement, and, and you know, the first half hour of class, you'd be lying on your back doing breathing exercise. So I, I fall asleep. You know, it's like, you know, to twenty something year old guy like was up till two in the morning before. Yeah, and like, and, and then the exercises that you just think are dumb. Well, it's not that I thought. Thought it was dumb. I just like pretend you're a tree. I and felt you're stupid. I was I wind. was awkward and shy, and so goofing around was my way of you know right. being cool. I guess I don't know. So they called you in, Fred. Can you yeah, see the, me in my office? <laughs> kind of something like that. I think the, you know, I always thought I did think it was some of the stuff I thought was weird, like you know, the, especially voice and movement stuff. I I liked acting. I liked when we got to you know production class and. We, I actually took this theater history class. It was a lot of fun. The teacher was was really interesting and made it interesting, and which is weird because I was never good at history. But for some reason, I was really I was into class. I never did homework or anything, but I was into class. But the voice and movement stuff I thought was weird. Like you know, when somebody would be okay, you're a barnacle, and the person would be bouncing all over the the walls. All I could think of was like, I've never seen a barnacle do that. <laughs> you know, like I just right. couldn't I couldn't escape. You know, I I didn't. I didn't buy into the fancy pants of theater. Like I didn't. It just did, I didn't compute. Like I, I'm not a theater guy. I, like I said, I love watching theater, but the whole theater world, the, the rehearsal process, the you know, we did one class where you like, okay, you're an embryo, and they, they take you all the way through the stages of life, and and then and then you got to come back. I'm like ah, I just, and yeah, you know, I'm gonna sit this one out. <laughs> and I'm I think I've the one I think what did it for me were were finally the the the, the head of the program took me aside and. And uh, suggested maybe it wasn't you know this wasn't for me was uh, so we we had to do uh, a, a piece and we had to be an animal bringing up the barnacle and we had to be an animal you had to be that animal for five minutes and five of us would go on stage and be this animal and of course everyone's dancing all over you know everyone's dancing all over I, and I chose because animals dance all yeah, the time yeah they're all yeah. over the place yeah. actually we were sea creatures because we we spent a day which was the best class of the whole semester we went to the aquarium oh yeah and so we spent the day at the aquarium and like you're going to pick an animal you're going to become that animal and you're going to do a five minute piece on it and i chose a starfish so for five minutes i just you know laid Stood there <laughs> no i just laid on the on the stage for five minutes. i actually did move i moved about two inches like each appendage yeah. in my head moved like you know i was everyone, going for realism yeah everyone yeah. went that's deep yeah well no well one no. person one person stood up for me. and then we the thing that drove me nuts we used to have these check-ins all the time we'd all sit in a circle and people would you know it's like it was therapy right and it's like oh, i don't know if this is the right place for therapy i don't think we should i shouldn't be helping anybody i, I know that for <laughs> sure and so we were bringing up and we we were talking about everybody's animal, and she got to me, and she's like, mm, Fred, what were you? And I was like, I was a starfish. She goes, I didn't believe you. I didn't believe that you were into it. I'm like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> and then and then uh, another bu- a buddy of mine kind of stood up for me, and, he's, and he was like, well, what about so-and-so? They didn't move. Uh, what was he? And, uh, oh, he was a sea cucumber. Oh, okay, okay. Well, he didn't move either. And she's like, yes, yes, but he was full of life. <laughs> and to me, that was like, oh, I just I'm just doesn't matter what I do. I'm not... Uh, <laughs> But uh, I didn't know how to tell my folks uh, I was kicked out of... How long had you been in when you were kicked out? This was... Was this first or second year? It was... It might have been first year. And uh, <laughs> and I, I I begged her to, you know, look, don't... Let me keep coming to class, right? <laughs> like, But I couldn't take her voice and movement class, but I could do the rest. So I couldn't get my credit, but I finished the, the term, right? Okay. And then... Yeah. So I did a couple of the studio plays, which the... Stu- now, when I got... When I forgot about when i said okay i'm not gonna do oh here's another thing too we did uh i can't remember the name of the play it was an italian about an italian family saturday sunday monday i think it was called and uh, another one i've never heard of yeah no, yeah and it was about an italian family and um even though i have an a U- ukrainian last name my background on my mom's side is italian actually i'm more italian than my mom. anyway it's a long story and uh so i was like oh this this is cool and there's a character that i actually kind of like oh i think i could be this guy and so we had to audition for him and um, I didn't get a part in the in the, the and I, I was like oh okay and she, she took me aside and she's like yeah you know you just weren't right for that I, I didn't you didn't come across as Italian to me I was like oh that's funny because I'm actually Italian and the the lead was like a ginger 
Like he was a redhead, you know, and it was like, oh, okay. But they but, must have gingers in. Well, uh, yeah, Italy. I'm sure, I'm sure yeah. they do. But you know, when you're a you know right. an- angsty like 21 theater student, you're like, oh, yeah, oh, and he's Italian. Like, give me a break. <laughs> and uh, but but I got into the this studio uh, play. Um, Nurse Jane goes to Hawaii. Another one. Yeah, but this play was. <laughs> this one sounds uh, rude. Sounds like a it porn. Does, well, you know what it Porno. is. It was kind of like noises off. One of those kind of like in and out doors. Like, what do you? What do you call that uh, type of comedy? Like in one door, out the other, like crossing paths and oh, uh, like the British farce. Yeah, kind of thing? For, yeah, British farce. Thanks. <laughs> uh, and it, it was a lot of fun. Oh and, yeah, and it, but it was all small, and it wasn't like it just felt like I didn't have to act. You know, I could just be this guy. Be more natural. Yeah, and I was playing a dumb pothead, so maybe that <laughs> that, that helped. I guess. Yeah, I think I can play this character. Yeah, I think I know this guy. <laughs> Did you? Uh, did you ever go back to that uh, acting coach and just say in your face, "Look at me now"? No. Look at me. No, because she was right. I was goof. She was right. I, it wasn't for me. Right. You know. But it, I, um, I took a, a fr- I, I made a bunch of good good friends in in that theater program, and uh, one of them talked me into taking this um, weekend workshop with uh, Duncan Fraser. Have you ever heard of Duncan Fraser? He, Sounds he, familiar, yeah, but he, I'm not sure. If you saw him, you. you any of his work, he's he, a longtime Vancouver actor, uh, and I learned more in that two days than I did in all uh-huh. my time at theater school. But it was more geared for film and television. So I, I realized, like, because I was pretty much done, I was ready to walk away. Like, I was like, okay, this isn't for me. I did, um, you know, I'm going to be a truck driver. I don't know. I'm going to find some odd job, mm-hmm. and I'll, I'm fine with that. I'll um, go back to performing in my mom's coffee shop. Yeah. <laughs> well, this was before that, actually. This was before my mom had the coffee shop. Oh, okay. Yeah. But uh, that weekend, kind of like, oh, okay. And then because I had theater, uh, Douglas College Theater on my resume, I got a job at Science World. And that's where that kind of, it kind of, I guess, took off. I don't know Another, if took off the right word. A lot of comics work at Science World. Yeah, a lot of, especially a lot of... Uh, Vancouver Theater Sports guys. Brian Anderson. Brian Anderson, a real good friend of mine, actually. Yeah. yeah. I know Ivan Decker's great stand up worked there. I think Dylan Reimer worked there, both stand ups. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know if you know P- Pierce Visser. He, yeah. yeah. Oh, he, he did? did? Yeah. He was there. A uh, bunch of guys. And uh, it was, that was actually a lot of fun. But that got me in there. And, and um, Andrew, a guy we worked with, he, he was taking class with this woman, Shay Hampton. He's like, oh, you should come out. You know, we were doing this, we were doing this brutal. Uh, dig them bones. It was uh, this paleontology. Uh, uh, <laughs> my God, it was so bad. An exhibit at Science World. Oh uh, no, yeah, but they they were doing you know dinosaurs or something, and so they wanted this uh, you know kids show, right? Like okay. it, was, it was totally written for like kindergarten to maybe grade two, mm-hmm. and the <laughs> and it's this dig them bones about this uh, you know paleontologist and his uh, crazy sidekick that was always getting in the way and. And there were songs, and which I'm like not a song and dance guy, right? <laughs> and there's a song uh, you, you dr- lit- actually it wasn't his sidekick at the beginning. I forgot about this. He was a dog, so we had this like dog costume we had to wear. And there was this song, "I'm a dog without a bone," right? That we had to sing. And the first day, I'm doing Brian Anderson and I are doing it. Oh yeah. And uh, they book in. They always would do this. They booked in like grade tens and elevens for this show that's geared for like, and I'm like, ah, guys, guys, uh, I think we got to cut the song. I, I think we just got to jump the song, forget the song. And, and Brian like just, oh no 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 no, we because it was my turn to do the song, right? Oh, so, you would yeah, take yeah, turns. Yeah, he's like, no no, you know we got we got to do the song. You know we just got we got you know we got to make it work. And I'm like, but him and Andrew are killing themselves in the back. And I'm sure enough, I'm out there, and the music starts, and I'm out there in this dog costume, and it's like quiet, but this like do 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 song comes up, and it's like you just oh god, he's gonna sing, <laughs> and I'm just like, and, and not only that, but about a bone. I'm a dog without a bone, and like the first line is I'm a dog without a bone, and just like some guys, I got a bone for you, and you're just like oh my god, and I can hear Anderson behind the curtain just killing himself laughing. <laughs> The, the, we cut the dog after that. I was the fodder. I was there, and they cut the dog after that. Okay. Not even for the grade ones? No, it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> Who wrote that? You guys wrote it? No, we had this guy come in, and I'm sorry, I forgot his name. 
Uh, and the whole time, I remember the first day, it's like, okay, so uh, how, how many of you guys sing, dance? And we're like, none of us were like, no, no, no singing and dancing, none of us, we, we don't do the singing. And then, oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, we're, we're, and then he came back because we were workshopping it. And he came back, okay, I've written a couple songs and a couple dance numbers. And we're like, oh, God. <laughs> uh, and then he left and we just rewrote it to suit the the audience, right, that was, we were getting. Was that like, uh, I was going to ask earlier, was that your last real job? You say you haven't had one in about yeah, 20 that, years? Well, that, that and my mom's coffee shop, right? But the coffee shop, I, you know, that's family business. So Right. But that, the coffee shop would have been my last sort of real job. So you were a paid improviser then? I guess I guess I You're was. Professional. Yeah. It was my first paid. Yeah, I resume. guess it was my first paid gig. Yeah, yeah, I guess it was. <laughs> and then the next day, people would come in, and you're serving them coffee. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I don't know if like yeah, yeah, I guess so. So I want to get back to. I should say that our guest uh, this week is Fred Iwanek, uh, and uh, the show is What's So Funny on CFRO 100.5 FM. Shouldn't laugh when I say your name, Fred. No, it's sorry. Just, I laugh every time you say years, it. For years, I've been saying it the wrong way. Oh, you just sit around in your house for years. You've been just sitting. I around. practice it every day. I said one guy this one day this guy's <laughs> going to be on my show. Yeah, where were we with that, Fred? I don't know. We were going back. Uh, so, oh yeah, I wanted to go back. So, like, uh, you're in high school. You weren't in the theater then, were you? I did. I actually did take theater, but um, I didn't do. I I did one play, I think, and I. I remember I was supposed to do. We did Lay Miz one one year, and I just perfect. Uh, I see you in that. <laughs> I know, and uh, I always found an excuse to not do the plays. Like I was so I was a really scared kid. I was a really shy, scared kid when oh, yeah. I was growing up. So it, like I just everything was fear to me. I saw the danger and everything, and but but somehow you were drawn to the performance, even though you you kind of well, wanted to, and you then you were too I afraid kinda, to do it. Yeah, it kind of wasn't. It, it all sort of. People told me I was funny, but I, I was only funny because I was awkward. Like, I wasn't, I was never, and I'm still not joke funny. Like, I, could, I couldn't write a funny joke, but I'm more of like that put underwear on my head and walk around like an idiot fun. Just, that always kills. Yeah, but it does, right? <laughs> you know, like, I, I, like anything, I had a really good group of friends that were, were really funny, especially, like, well, they were all really funny, smart funny, crazy, like, you know, goofy funny as well. Like, this one guy, Orson, would write these hilarious poems you know like he they, they all had a funny gift and we were mm. so i was kind of like the guy that would just sit and absorb all that then every once in a while like without i don't know how i do it i would come up with something funny and i would make them laugh and that was it like that was i was solid for the month right <laughs> and we'd make funny videos and like that was my so people told me i was funny but it, i was just goofing around with my buddies like right. i wasn't trying to be funny i wasn't trying to be i took theater because we had to take electives and I think there were cute, cute easy. Yeah, there were cute girls in class and you know, <laughs> that's that's why I did it. And when I found out we had to do plays, I was like, Oh crap <laughs> you know, well, I gotta get out of this. Hmm, theaters. Uh, I wonder what they do there. Yeah. What? Plays? <laughs> I know. I told you I wasn't very smart. <laughs> I mean I picked up on it, like I figured it out, you know, but uh usually too late. But so they were and then my, my my parents really wanted me to go to college and I, I didn't I had no I no idea what I wanted to take and I just I don't know why I I took I took some electives and one of them I took a theater class at Douglas College and this is what you were talking about when you said you were asked to leave no this was just an elective just so, an elective yeah at first so I took a few like, I took women's studies too like yeah, I just, why women's studies well because when I showed up I showed up late and I had like last pick of classes so I just thought like, there might be some yeah cute I just girls need I needed women's no studies. I didn't think that at all I was just like literally <laughs> pulling credits. And, and the women's studies class was, I, I, it was actually really, it was a great class. Like I was, I was, oh. I, I looked forward to it. And then I took a, a one, like a, a beginner's acting, one of, you know, one of those as well. And that was actually a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun in it. And um, in that class was an, an, another guy, Hig Sutherland, who is a fantastic actor. He's on Bard all the time. Okay. He does a lot of Bard on the beach. Yeah. And he's, I still bump in there. And him and I ended up, trying out for the theater program at Douglas. Oh, I see. And we both got in. But the woman running the class was supposed to, was also running the program, but when we got in, that changed, and we ended up getting a different um, teacher. So it didn't work out the way I kind of thought it would. And, um, yeah, so that's how that worked out. Yeah, I saw you in some bard on the beach, didn't I? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> it would be quite. Uh, I guarantee it would be entertaining. No, so it's interesting because you <laughs> you were awkward and shy and yeah. But also, I you know, 
judging from your theater classes, the way you describe them, you can't really be self-conscious to do these kinds of exercises. Because that's what I'm sitting there going, I couldn't uh, pretend to be a fish in something. Like, I would just feel too stupid. Oh, well, I, all through college, I did. Like, I did. That was exactly me. I just was completely self-conscious. Right, like, I was, right, you know, right, I was right. not... I mean, it was clear to me. I was in the, like, I've just, I do not belong here. Like, it, but, but like, you know, looking back, I learned a ton, not, not so much about the craft, but I learned a lot about, you know, commitment and, you know, what it takes. Right. And clearly, like I knew theater and I did some theater. I did like, you know, we did some, uh, some fringe stuff and, you know, that kind of stuff. And a friend of mine would write shorts and rent the, you know, when the Vancouver Little Theater was around, rent that for a weekend. And we would literally just show up with our lines in our head and, and mm. do the play. And that, I like, I love that kind of stuff, but the right. whole rehearsal process and all that kind of stuff, like it, it's just, it's just not me. Like, mm-hmm. it's just not, I don't, I don't enjoy it. I love, I always, I always loved opening night and closing night and all the other stuff. I just, I have no time. Like, I just can't do it. <laughs> so have you become less self-conscious? You've, um, you've had to in film and TV or because you're playing characters that are more rooted in reality, you don't have to. No. Well, oddly enough, I, when I'm working, when I'm on set, absolutely, I'm less self-conscious. I'm comfortable and I enjoy it. But whenever I have to do anything to get work, like auditioning oh, right. or if I'm you know, going to a, an awards function or some kind of you know, press fun- junket or all that kind of stuff, I get all weird in my head. I'm socially awkward and... I just feel like I'm like, I, I come home from any of those things and I just sit on the couch and I'm like, who the hell did, who the hell was, like, who was that? Like, who did I become? Because like, that's not me, you know? But in a, in a, like, were you more show busy? And you were thinking, know, I don't know what it was. Like, I just, I felt like I had to be this, and nobody told me what they expected of me, but I felt I had to put on this persona of this guy that I think they expect. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, right. and, and uh, like, I I still don't understand how I ever got jobs because I would walk out of an audition and I would just be like, what the f- was that? Like, what was that? That was terrible. Like, not you know, like you planned it at all. No, well, that's the thing. Like, it's just like, oh, that was, and obviously it worked sometimes. Right. You know? And I guess thinking back, a lot of the characters I played were really awkward and <laughs> stupid. <laughs> So I guess that's what they expected. And then now when I go into an audition, well, I haven't been in an audition in a long time because I just don't want to do them anymore. And, you know, it's still, I just feel, I'm just like, who am I? Like, I'm like, you know, I'm like a 40 year old man and I feel like it, like I just turn into this idiot. I hate it. <laughs> I just hate myself after. I always have to buy myself after, Self-loathing. buy myself, so, yeah, I have to buy myself af- something after an audition. Back in the day, it was usually CDs. I would immediately go like down to, uh, you know, A&B Sound or, Sam the record man and right. buy like depending on you could tell how how bad the audition went, went with how many CDs I bought like you know 10 CDs bad one friend oh, it's, it's, um, it's terrible <laughs> what were you buying oh I don't know like whatever uh oh I remember somebody talked me into buying Jamiroquai and that was like one of the best I'll CDs remember I that? ever bought That's his one CD oh god it was like yeah he was like uh he was like uh Stevie Wonder everyone said he's gonna be like Stevie Wonder what a talent though just to hit me to me I and I don't, what did he just decide? Yep, yeah, that's it. I'm done. Well, he, he probably didn't decide that. Well, because you think, well, think I don't he know. probably just blew it all on that one CD and had nothing left. Maybe I don't know, but wow, that was a great CD. Still listen to it. I haven't listened to it in a while, but now yeah, gonna, I should stream that. You know what the problem is? I you know what I really I don't have a CD player at home anymore. No, you can stream stuff now. No, I know, but you know what I mean. Like I got all these CDs and I. And now, like, my laptop blew up, so now I don't have a burner. So now I can't even take my CDs and MP3 them. And I'm like, I'm not buying that. I just, I have that. But I can't listen to it. <laughs> that was Problems. a tangent. How did we get onto? I don't know, but I liked uh, it. So so you got, uh, you graduated or you finished theater school. And I, f- I survived. You survived. Yeah. You went out, did auditions, got jobs uh, pretty soon after? No, like I said, I, I started working at uh, the science world. The science world. That's when you know you're getting old when <laughs> yeah. things are the... You know, that the yeah, science world. The science world. Eh? You know, down there on Main Street, the science world, I got to... Uh, my first gig, my first paid gig. Um, I was 22 years old. Dog was, without a bone. Dog without a bone. I'm a dog. And I think I tried to... Oh, that was the thing, too. I was trying to do a Jimmy Durante kind of like oh, when yeah. I was singing it. And it was... I probably... It was probably way worse than I thought it was. Um, uh, but... Uh, Everyone's going, who's Jimmy Durante? <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, Andrew Kinney, who was one of the guys working there too, he was also a theater sports guy from Edmonton uh, that was doing Vancouver theater sports f- for a while too. And um, he uh, he's like, oh, you should come to my acting class. Uh, and so I went and audited uh, Shay Hampton's her name and something about her class. She made I was just gonna watch and then she made me read a scene and she didn't make me. She asked me. I remember Andrew said like, she asked you to read a scene, just read a scene. I was like, oh, I don't want to, it doesn't matter, just, you know, you, you have to, you have to read a scene. I was, so I was all, like, stressed out about that through, I'm walking to watch. But something about her class just, it took a lot of fear out of acting because it took a lot of the power out of, I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's, the only way I can describe it, it's just so fluffy and theory, you know, actory when I talk about it. But mm-hmm. it, it made it really easy in my mind was, uh, you know, just don't, literally don't do anything. Just listen and react. You know, and um, she she uh, refers to it as acting from source. So you think of your you think of your your body. I <laughs> think giggle when I say this. Your body is an instrument, and the words play you. You don't play the words. You know. Your your what did you call it? A voice prop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. see, that's what I mean. You're an yeah. instrument, but it, it it really makes it made sense. The words you know, play you. Yeah, and it's not for everybody. And you know, some people really like scene study, and they like to really break it down. And like, oh, what animal is this character? Oh, it's a snake. This guy's a snake. You know, they like that. It doesn't work for everybody. You know, everybody has. It. And this for some reason clicked. And so I was like, I wasn't thinking of getting like, oh, okay, now I'm going to be an actor. But I was like, I kind of like this class, and and I want to take it. And she took me on, and. And um, well, how many were in the class when you were audited? Yeah, uh, like 10, 11 people. Okay, and so when she took you on, that was that privately or in another? No, group? in a group. So you, okay. you know, every week there'd be like I th- you know uh, ten to twelve, well, uh, maybe not even that big, eight to ten people. Okay, and uh, it was uh, it was really kind of freaky because she would you'd sit at a table with uh, your your scene partner and she'd give you the scene upside down, so you've never seen it, and then you would just you know open you know flip it over and you would have to go back and forth and you were never allowed to look at the script when you delivered a line you'd have to get the line so it was painful to watch because it'd be like you know somebody would say a line like why did you say that and then you'd have to look down get the line so there's this moment what do you mean why did i say that you know so it was like it was like terrible but it was a great way to you didn't just read recite the words on the paper yeah well like you you couldn't like Right. Even if you could, like some people could only get two words at a time, right? But mm. she would just like, you know, if somebody started reading off the paper, she'd be like, no, no. And she'd just like scream at you, no, off the page, off the page. The word plays you. Yeah. And uh, and then that scene you would memorize and you would bring back for the, the next class. And oh. then, you, then you would do it like on your feet. And, and then you're 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 listening. You're not waiting for the next memorized bit in your head. You're you're, you're listening. Yeah, and then you're present. You're gonna pull that out from the recesses of your brain. Yeah. yeah, and it 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 just for some reason it stuck with me and like it clicked. Sorry, it stuck with me. Well, it did stick with me because I still that's how if if anyone ever hires me again, that's the way <laughs> the process I guess I use. <laughs> but uh, where were we go? Oh yeah, so so I wasn't really thinking about acting like. Okay, I'm going to be an actor now. I was still working at Science World, and the only thing I didn't like about that job was I had to have a name tag. And I was I was getting close to thirty at the time, and I was like, ah, I don't know, I don't want to be thirty, and I got a job where I got to wear a name tag. Like, it's it's not a big deal, but to me, for some reason, that was like. But it's not uh, fast food. No, it's but the Science World. Here, here's the thing: it doesn't matter what you do, and it's true. If you like it, it shouldn't matter, right? It yeah. doesn't matter what you're doing. Yeah. But for some reason, I the name tag bothered me, and I was constantly getting pulled aside. Um, Fred. You need to put on your name tag. I said, like, "Oh yeah, I lost it." I bet. I'll, okay, we'll we'll get you a new one. And yeah, oh no, absolutely. And I would constantly be losing my name tag. <laughs> I don't know why it bugged me so much, but uh, <laughs> anyway, in that class, um, um, uh, there was an agent there who's still my, ag- my my agent now who came in and saw me and um, took me on, and then started sending me out for auditions, and I kept you know started booking little things here and there, and. So it just kind of and slowly you had a career. Yeah, wow. was, which was actually the first year I uh, I've been so used to having a regular job where people take your taxes for you. So I had I had this great year. I had booked like four beer commercials that year and a Mitsubishi commercial, and they were all U.S. nationals. I made like I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me! <laughs> and the checks were coming, and I was spending them as fast as they could come. I was buying like stereo equipment. I bought a car, and Bunch I'm like, of oh, CDs. this is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> And then tax time comes and it's like, all right, yo, like uh, thirty thousand dollars. I'm like, what? <laughs> it took me third season of Corner Gas to pay back the tax. Oh man. man! Yeah, I had to set up a payment plan with CRA because they phoned me. They're like, well, um, 
what can we do? And I'm like, I, I don't know. You tell me. I go, I don't know. And he's like, um, all right, well, uh, how much can you afford a month? I'm like, yeah, a hundred bucks. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> okay, well, uh, but you'll have to do, you know, I was like, yeah, as soon as I, and then I got corner gas, so I could pay a little bit more. And, wow. Thank God for corner gas. Oh my God. Yeah. Five seasons. How many seasons? Uh, six. Six seasons. Six seasons in a movie. And then Brent pulled it out from under you. He did, yeah. Bastard. <laughs> no. But you had paid off your debt, so you were okay. I paid off my debts, and it, <laughs> you know, it, it, uh, it worked out pretty good. I can't complain. But with, I was so. wondering that. I, I mean, I have had Brent on here a couple times and spoken to him many other times about leaving the show. And, like... It's not just him going, okay, you know, I've had enough. He created it, and he stars yeah. in it. But there are all these other people, too, like you. Like, did you guys all want to leave, or were you like, no, I'll, I'll run this into the ground. <laughs> yeah. No. I'll go till I'm 60. Well, for me, yes and no. I would. Pl- I, I always said, and I mean, I loved playing Hank. It was fun. I loved being in Saskatchewan. I had a lot of really good friends. I still have a lot of really good friends in Saskatchewan. Mm-hmm. I, I just love— In the summertime. Yeah, I love doing the show <laughs> yeah. in the summertime. It was tough. It's It, it was— Saskatchewan's a, that's a shock to the system when you grow up on the west coast yeah. and then like literally was the first time I'd ever been to the prairies oh really and it was uh it didn't take me long but it was definitely a shock to the system but it's a place um when you end up getting <laughs> I don't want to say forced to be there but you get thrown into it and you start finding the beauty in it it's it's a pretty amazing place like it's I, yeah. I loved it I, I loved every bit of it but yeah I always said like I would have played Hank as long as people wanted to see Hank, mm-hmm. like and and if people wanted to see Corner Gas for twenty more years, I would have been happy to do it. Well, you mean you went immediately into Dan for Mayor, but was there ever talk of hey a spinoff? They used to do that all the time. Yeah, the and, Hank Show. Yeah, I don't think that would have been a very good show. Like Brent, uh, Brent leaves and you take over the business, <laughs> and it just yeah, no, you know that would have been. Well, uh, why wouldn't that that have been good? You would I, you well, would I, have needed cooperation from the other cast because it would be not believable if everyone just left town well and also i don't think hank's a good central character like hank's not a no a character no i don't think hank could carry a show. he was kind of like i said in the what's so funny blog today now available on the internet that uh <laughs> you're uh you're kind of like uh, gilligan like <laughs> was, he, was he somebody that uh did uh, you channel anybody when you were like because he was this i mean gilligan was more central i guess but he yeah. was like the you know brent was the skipper <laughs> Maybe. Well, Brent, Brent, yeah, I mean, well, that's that's interesting because I don't know that uh, Gilligan's Island really followed the sort of, I guess, the pattern of because usually, usually you guys were stranded in uh, Dog River. <laughs> no, it's true, but I mean, this term is like usually the central character is a little bit more of the straight guy, right? Yeah, that's you know, true. he's yeah. sort of like to me, he's sort of like the representative for the audience. Yeah, you know, and so to me, the, a character that's going to be that guy needs to be a little bit more of the straight man, like. Even Bob Newhart, as funny as Bob Newhart is, he was really the straight guy in in, yeah. in all in both his shows. He was the straight guy. Yeah, he's the, he's the anchor. Yeah, so he you keeps need that it grounded, to, yeah. and there's all the p- things happening around him. To me, you need that kind of character. And, yeah, and Gilligan right. Gilligan's Gilligan's Gilligan was different. It was weird way. because it and it and it worked, and it was a different time. I don't know. It, it'd be in, I don't know if Gilligan's Island would work now. I don't know. No, probably not. Uh, I mean, we're too savvy. <laughs> <laughs> Too savvy, didn't it? I mean, I get chuckles out of it, but <laughs> yeah. So you would have played uh, Hank forever, but there was no talk of a spinoff. No, and there's never any talk of a spinoff. And it's funny because when Dan from Air came out, a lot of people thought it was a spinoff. So mm-hmm. I think they had trouble. It's like, oh man, where's your hat? Well, I, it, I'm not, I'm not that guy anymore. Yeah, you are. You just Hank without a hat. And like to me, when I watch it, I'm like, no, I'm not. But then I was like, yeah, okay, I, I understand. <laughs> and. Yeah, what's oh, this? Oh, is this the Gilligan's Island? Uh, what is this? Oh, Dan Vermeer. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I love this. Uh, I actually really love this opening theme. This is the theme song for your old sitcom Dan Vermeer. Yeah. Right. You know, I really enjoyed that show. Um, yeah, I miss it. I miss uh, every once in a while. Uh, Mary Ashton Toth, who who uh, played my love interest, mm-hmm. um, she she uh, got me on the uh, fail blog. You ever get on fail blog? Nope, I don't oh, know it. Fail blog is is it on the internet? It's on the interweb. It's on okay. it's on the <laughs> www dot uh, interweb. All right. It's just like usually people doing stupid things, but she gave me this book, fail blog book, and it's like cre- you know silly signs, you know wordplay and just of real stuff. And so every once in a while we'll, we'll still email back and forth like. 
you know, YouTube fail blog links. And uh, it always <laughs> makes me laugh. I miss that show. I miss, uh, it was a, I, I, I would like to have a do over on that show. Mulligan. Yeah, I really would like to have a mulligan on that show. I think I think that show, um, for a lot of reasons, uh, I think it could have been I th- one. I think it could have been really good if if it was given a chance to really find itself. And two, I think I think uh, I want another go at it because I, I don't think I ruined the show, but I I don't think I was because uh, I took it seriously. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I but I don't think I approached it as well as I could have. No. You didn't no. pretend hard enough. I didn't, I didn't pretend hard <laughs> enough. <laughs> I mean, you, you know the thing. You foresaw. Yeah. You well, no, well, the thing The thing that, here's the thing is like, I, I honestly, like I always show up with the way I think something should be done, right? But then I always cave to what the director or the oh, showrunner yeah, yeah. wants, right? Because um, you got to have to. Kinda well, you do, to, you do. You? I do. I do believe you do and, because it's their show. Unless, unless I created the show, mm-hmm. it's their, I'm the, I work for them, it's their show. So it's like I, I'll do what I want as soon as somebody comes and talks to me. Well, we want to do okay. That's what I do. That's what I try to do. But I think there's times when I watch that show where I could have maybe stood up a little bit. You know, I know what you're saying, but th- you know what? I think if you just let me go this way, it'll work better. You know, I, I, I wish a I had subtle a, difference or a big difference. No, mostly subtle, mostly subtle. But like I think I could have, I think I could have stood up. I had a little more confidence in my abilities in what I saw. In the character, especially, hmm. and I think I I had trouble in in first year uh, with being the straight guy. You know, like I was used to getting the laughs or being the goofy guy, and uh, it wasn't a jealousy thing. It's just I wasn't playing the straight guy properly. And then when we got to second season, sort of the dynamic show of the show changed, and it was kind. Of, I was just kind of getting my legs about halfway through second season. Well, I mean, you still got laughs. Yeah, the, like, the, but maybe I, that's a problem because you are a comedic actor and you should be getting laughs. Yeah, I th- no, don't get me wrong. I think the character needs to get laughs, but yeah, like, yeah. I, th- I think. But I mean, but maybe you more than the others. Uh, I don't know. Like, every everybody in that show was. Pr- I don't know why that show. I have no idea why that show didn't go. You know, because like when I look at the people we had, we had like the writing was fantastic. Like the scripts were were great. The show looked good in my books. Um, the cast we had were so like really, really funny. Everybody made me laugh and they were really good people too. So like going to work was awesome. Like it was just, I really look forward to going to work. Where was it filmed? It was filmed at Toronto and just outside of Toronto, Kitchener, Waterloo, a little bit of Hamilton. Yeah. Um, the hammer. And, uh, yeah, I I wish I could do that show over again. Well, people should give it another look on uh, YouTube or whatever episodes are up there. I don't know if they're all up there, but I don't even I don't even think you can get DVDs. Like it's it just seemed like it was a good show. I I know, and and you know, like it just seemed when you know when CTV decided not to renew it, it just seemed like it just like (laughs) all right, everyone just kind of walked away from it, and and uh, in my I always kind of wish, well, hey, maybe CBC will take it, and they're like, "Ah, yeah. That happens so rarely, and I don't know why it doesn't happen more often where, you know, in the States or Canada, where, you know, it's show, one network doesn't like it, well, it doesn't work for them. They don't like it, it whatever, but take it to another network. And yeah. now there's so many options. Yeah, I don't know. It's a weird business, because I, I know that they were, they were doing another show, and Mark Farrell, who was, uh, who was uh, one of the creators on uh, Dan Vermeer, when he was also co-creator and uh, showrunner Corner Gas and... Um, he had another show, and the, and he phoned my agent and said, hey, well, I want Fred to read for this. And my agent did a little, because he was like, well, we'll just bring him out and have him read for network. And he's like, oh, no, could you just put him on tape? And so it did a little kind of, my agent did some digging, and he's like, yeah, I don't want you to do this. And I'm like, what? Why not? He's like, well, I, he, he did some digging, and the network did, just didn't want to have anything to do with anybody from Corner Gas or Dan Vermeer. Ah. And I was like, well, that doesn't make sense. So there's like a weird kind of like, you know, in, in Canada with the network, sometimes I think there's kind of like, oh, well, we're not, Oh, that they're a CTV person, or oh, they're a global person, or oh, they're a Rogers person, and you know they're a CBC person. Yeah, you don't like, often see them. No, I mean, do you? No, well, Murdoch Mysteries did, didn't they? Weren't they like? I don't know. Murdoch Mysteries started on. Uh, didn't CBC buy them after a few seasons? They moved them over. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm getting that wrong. Did Degrassi swap the uh, networks? Okay, so I'm wrong. I could be wrong too, though. <laughs> <laughs> I could just be making this up. <laughs> well, I mean, this could be one of those conversations I had my, with myself in the car, where like, you know, Degrassi was uh, used to be on CTV. What? No, no, it was on the CBC then CTV. No, no, no. I'm t- <laughs> so I'm just like random alt. Well, no, no. Oh yeah, I'm just creating alt facts. Alt facts. Yeah. There's there's nothing yeah. incorrect. Hmm. So Dan Vermeer, you sound regretful 
Now, when it hits where they say, so long, we don't want you, you're canceled, you're the star, does it really hit hard? Yeah, yeah. You know, here's the thing, and this is where, like, um, <laughs> yeah, Dan Vermeer didn't get renewed, and then uh, in my wisdom, I thought, all right, I'm going to give L.A. a crack. And so I go down there and bomb miserably in L.A. In LA. Hey, well, what does that mean? Why? Well, I, I went down and I, you know, we're responsible for our own actions and everything. But I also got kind of let down by a few other sort of folks. Like, you know, I got down there and I was ready to go and, and I didn't have the support I thought I had. And so then I was scrambling to try to meet people and it was kind of too late. And then I had to come back home. And, uh, and so it was kind of like, you know, in my mind, I went through a period where, uh, and not to get all serious and mopey, but I, yeah, I kind of started getting depressed and it's like, oh, I just ruined the television series and, you know, I ruined the careers of a few people on that show and I can't, I couldn't make it in LA and, you know, and then I'm coming up here and they're pre-screening me for two lines on some BS, you know, show <laughs> and, you know, it, it was a, uh, yeah, it hit, it hit kind of hard. It, you can't help but think you suck and, and, um, it was, it was, uh, kind of sucked. Well, this is kind of what you said off the top, that uh, sometimes the pretenders get too much credit and too much blame. So it was, certainly wasn't your fault. It's a group effort. It's, it is know, a group effort, yeah. And as you say, you take direction from the director and the showrunner, but they're not front and center. Their their face isn't out there no. every week, and the title isn't their character's name. No, but, you know, and when I say a do-over, I don't think I you know, I don't think I crapped the bed, you know, I, no. you know, but I just, I just think it in general, like I just, if, if, if a lot of the things I've done, I would really, really love a, a do over on that. But do you think it could ever happen? No, no, no. I don't think it could ever happen. Which lasted longer, Dan Vermeer or Hiccups? Well, they were the same. Actually, I think, I think we, I think we got, I think they technically lasted longer because we got the news first. Mm. And then I think it was another week or two. They weren't answering their phones. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> we don't want to lose this one. <laughs> You'd have to ask Brent about that. Don't answer the phones. <laughs> We're just going to show up. We got the scripts. We're just going to show up. Uh, well, Nancy had a, a, a theory as to maybe why it didn't work for hiccups and maybe it's also for Dan Vermeer is that it, it just came too quickly on the heels of Corner Gas. Like it was the very next season mm. and everyone watched Corner Gas and now it's like, hey, there's Hank. Now he's, his name's Dan and he's yeah. the mayor in Ontario. What? <laughs> I think it was probably a combination of a bunch of things. I think that, that pr probably played into it. I think people were expecting another corner gas hoping for another corner gas. I know the way uh, CTV promoted it at the time, it was confusing. They thought it was the same show, Hiccups and Dan Vermeer. They would always kind of promote them together, you know? Because right. I remember, like, a bunch of times when we were doing press and stuff, p people would say, even people in the media would go, that's so great that Brent put you in his new show. Mm -hmm. I was like, uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm, a, I'm not. Actually, I'm, <laughs> I'm in this other show. Um, and then I also think the sale of, uh, of CTV to Bell Media also had a thing, you know? So there's a bit of a cleaning of the house that was going uh -huh. on as well. And I remember uh, in season two, we had some of the new execs come to a read-through uh, one of the episodes, and they, they literally just sat at the table with their hands crossed and didn't laugh once and kind of went, all right, you know, we're not... Uh you know, we're not, we're not, uh, we're not in the good books. Brutal. Here. And then they just got up and laughed, or did they say anything? Uh, well, not to us. I'm sure they talked to, you know, the the guys, the yeah. Paul and them. and yeah. Tough business. It is, but, you know, it's like, you can't really, there's no guarantees in the business, right? And that's, that's the thing. Like, uh, I chose to get in the business, and that's what the business is, so. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say earlier, you've, you, Dan Vermeer foretold the rise of uh, President Donald Trump. Pretty much, yeah. That we were way <laughs> too ahead of our time. Yeah. Man, you imagine that show came out now? Yeah. Yeah. Do over. Do over, yeah. Come on. But, you know, they're going to cast somebody else. They're going to cast some good-looking dude that's got two credits from the States. Yeah. You're not bitter. I'm. Not, you know what? I'm, I'm actually not. Like, I'm not bitter. Like, I, I knew I knew even first season of Corner Gas, like every season of Corner Gas, you know, you kind of figured it could be the last because we never, we never knew when we wrapped the season, whether we were coming back or not. Oh, really? Each yeah, there was, season? Yeah, there was always like a, a buffer until we knew. Like, we wouldn't know. I think we'd wrap in sept, uh, maybe, yeah, about September, October, we'd wrap. And then and then we wouldn't get the go-ahead till April, May. So, you know, it was always this sort of long stretch, are we are. You always had a feeling, right? Like, you're like, oh, okay. We, the sixth season was the only one we knew going in that was going to be the last. You're right. Because yeah. Brent told you. You got out before they could tell him. Yeah. 
Yeah. I remember the lunch. We had this lunch, and I was like, you know, kind of, you kind of knew something was up. And but to me, I was like, oh, you know, they they got us for two more years. They well, are they really going to cancel? Oh, maybe they're going to give us a raise. And so I'm like, <laughs> like I just set myself up for this big, huge, you know, <laughs> letdown. And you know, uh, this will be the last season. I'm just sitting there at the table with my eye, like getting ready to hear the, you know, like. All this, you know, the guy that thinks he's going to win the award, getting ready to get up, and then like, <laughs> well, I just like to thank my other, t- you know, I was like, oh, I'm uh, sorry, excuse yeah. me. <laughs> you're going to get a raise. You're out getting new stereo equipment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what? What you got now? You say uh, you don't do auditions anymore. Um, and no. You said if anyone hires you again, but you you mentioned earlier voiceover work. Yeah. So th- this might have saved saved my my acting career because I've been thinking about different business opportunities and I got into a little bit of writing which I like writing but I realized I can't write on a on a deadline I can write when I'm inspired to write mm, and that's, uh, that's a tough yeah. Yeah, it's tough to be a staff <laughs> writer when you're like yeah I don't know if I can have that to you by tomorrow <laughs> um, but um, uh, yeah so I, I started auditioning for voice stuff for animation and and I booked this uh, show Dino Trucks which is on Netflix it's a it's a kid show a DreamWorks uh, Netflix thing. And, cool. And it's like literally the best job I ever had. Do you have a crazy voice or just your voice? It's kind of my voice, but like, uh, it's like, uh, I don't even know what to say without sounding like it. It's like, uh, hey, uh, hey, everybody, what's that? You okay. know, it's kind of like Yeah, that, so yeah. It, it is a voice. Yeah, it's a voice. And uh, his name's Click Clack. And then the coolest thing is like, so I'm like, now this is what I want to do. Like, I, I love everything. Like, you as don't much, have to shave. Well, I don't have to shave, but even like everything about the business I love. Like even auditioning, I get excited to go audition, which is bizarre for voice, for voice work because like, and which is bizarre because like I hate everything about trying to get work for, for TV film, but for, for animation and voice work, I like, I actually really get up for auditioning huh. and working and you, you're like a bunch of adults and you're, you're, you're standing around in a circle in front of the mic and you're just like your cheeks hurt from laughing because you're all making these these voices and it's just a it's just such a great time like it's but just, when you actually record aren't you by yourself well yes and no i mean like sometimes you go in for pickups but generally they try to get at least the shows i've worked on mm-hmm. they try to get you all together mm. and here's the coolest thing it seems like as soon as i made the decision it's like you know what i'm going to focus on this i'm going to try to get a foot in this side of the business because i really enjoy it Brent came to us. I don't know if you know this. Yes, I was yeah. just about to say. Yeah. So, oh, but sorry. Tell, did I tell jump the again? listeners? Oh, yeah. So uh, we're starting recording episodes for an animated Corner Gas. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. It, it is like it's amazing how these two worlds like came together. And the scripts are really funny, actually, the ones we've been we've recorded so far. We're still recording and we're in production. And we did a little demo and the demo was was really funny. Like I was like when he first told me, I was like, oh, yeah. I was really excited because it melded the two worlds. But mm-hmm. I was like, eh, how's that going to be? And so we did this little demo that they used to shop to networks and kind of show CTV. It's like, see, this is what it's going to be like. And they showed us the demo, and it was it was really funny. Like, it, it really works. Like, it's uh, I'm really excited It'll about it. It'll be like a half hour? Yeah, they're doing like half hour. Well, 22 minutes, so a half hour yeah, spot. Yeah. I think it's going to be on Comedy Network, but it, not for a while. Probably be probably early 2018. And is the whole cast involved? Well, yes, sadly, not oh, Janet yes. Wright, John, obviously. Janet Wright just passed yeah. away. But it's actually kind of a cool story that came out of that. Her husband, Bruce, uh, suggested a really good friend of Janet's. So they auditioned her, Yeah, Corinne. Is she, is she an actor? She's an actress, yeah. yeah. She's done voice work, too, as well. But she's also an actress. She's a great stage actress. And um, I, felt like I felt like I did a Trump there. She's a really great actress. Uh, she's <laughs> the best. She's fantastic. She's the greatest actress in the history of actresses. Um, that's a terrible Trump person. No, it wasn't bad. Yeah, it was all right. I could put some more effort into it, but I'm lazy. So Brent and them auditioned her, and they chose her. And so it, it made Bruce really happy because she's such a good friend. Right. And when we were doing the voice, she's in Toronto doing the voice with a couple of cast, and there were moments where you just kind of took your breath away. It was like, oh, my God. Like, she really kind of captured really? Emma. Yeah. Like, vocally... Well, she she definitely has her own sound, but she she's also got that bit of Janet, like the yeah. the tone of the voice, the gar, you know the yeah. you know the smoking a cigarette, you know like yeah. like I don't know how to say that without because like, it's a great thing. And there were like I I, I was Nancy and I were like we sh- were side by side by the mics, and there were moments when we were listening to uh, Corinne uh, say her lines, and I I looked at Nancy, she and we just like oh my god, that's. Mm. It's like just give you a little bit of a right. chill, like it's yeah, it's really oh, that's nice. That's great, and, but everyone else is the same. Yeah, everybody else is back, and um, I think the only time you'll see some differences is, is with some of the city folk. They've they're bringing in new people for city folk, uh, like the townspeople and stuff. Yeah. Will be 
different cast, but but some some of the other sort of What's main. What's his name? <laughs> Brent's dad. Yeah, uh, he's back. Oh yeah, they're all back. Yeah, yeah, but he's a Toronto guy, right? Yeah. So there's uh, well, three of the cast oh, are in Tara, Toronto. Tara's in Toronto. Yeah, Tara, uh, Karen, and, and uh, Eric are in Toronto, and the rest of us are Eric, in Vancouver. That's it, Eric Peterson. Yeah, and uh, but we do a, like a connection, like a live connect, so we they, we right. can all hear each other. Do it over Skype. <laughs> yeah, kind of Skype. Yeah, kind of a Skype. Thing. Oh, you're breaking up. What? Yeah, yeah. Beep boop boop. Or whatever the sound <laughs> of the thing is. So that sounds like a lot of fun, and then you'll it, do like uh, a whole season. You got the scripts for yeah, we're doing season. for sure one season, thirteen episodes. I hope we do at least a few more because because I want to. <laughs> yeah, because you get to be Hank again. <laughs> yeah, so it's you know you know I, there's probably people going out there going, oh my god, really? Come on, could that show just please die? But um, but then there's there's gonna be there's, there's gonna a be lot people like, who don't the, like oh, everything. I know, but on social media, there's been way more positive reaction. Like people are just you know fans of the show are really excited uh-huh. to see what it's going to be like. So hopefully we don't disappoint them. I'm pretty confident we're not going to disappoint them. I think they're going to be really happy with because yeah. uh, if the the. The animation I've seen from the demo is really cool, and the scripts where it's cool is like it's still the tone of the show. But when they do the flashback stuff, they can get really kind of off off the charts with that. So you can right? go anywhere. In they animation. can go anywhere. Yeah. So I think that's where they're going to see like you know get a little bit more fun. Yeah. Corner gas on the moon, even maybe I don't know. Yeah. I don't. I don't get to write the stuff. You know, I find with animation, uh, I'm hung up a lot on what it looks like. <clears throat> right. And if I. You know, like I'm not a fan of Futurama because of the way they're drawn. But oh. I think it's funny. Right. But I, I just don't watch it I because gotcha. of that. Whereas really? I, I like The Simpsons. I like that look. I'm oh, not, I, I don't like the Family Guy looks. Interesting. What is it? Just the characters? I, no, it's the way it's drawn. Just visual. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And um, What about South Park? I don't like that. No? Yeah. And people just rave about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't like the it's look a bit, of it. It's I a love bit Dr. Risky. Katz, though, which is very raw. I, I don't remember watch, that I, don't, I know the one you mean, but I've never seen an episode of it. Oh, it's my favorite of all time. I'm going to check it out. Then. They're all on YouTube. Oh, oh then I'm definitely going to watch it. Yeah, there you go. Along with Dan Vermeer. It's not on YouTube. It's not even on. I don't even think it's on like. It is on YouTube. I said. Oh, on the YouTube. Sorry, so, I I heard YouTube and I, and I probably repeated YouTube, didn't I? But I was thinking uh, Netflix. Netflix. Yeah. yeah no. 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 Yeah. Doctor Katz is on YouTube. Okay. okay, I will watch it on the YouTube. I was gonna. You know what was gonna happen? I was gonna go home and get on the Netflix, and it's like that a hole. It's the- <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get finished Netflix. Oh. Uh, okay, Fred Iwanek. How was that? That was good. That was good, yeah. Yeah, the pronunciation. With the power, you had power behind it too. Yeah. I'm like, and I didn't giggle after it. No, you I sold it. It only took what? An, what are we? An hour in? What are we're we? We're past that. Oh my god, a past! Holy crap! Yeah, we got to get get going. I know you were. You said this is past your bedtime. Yeah. So I've kept you long. I, I appreciate you staying up, drinking coffee. Yeah. I'm You're gonna, gonna be up all night. I'm now. gonna be up all night. <laughs> but uh, it was good. I watching Doctor Katz. <laughs> you should. You should. <laughs> Well, we're going to look forward to the Corner Gas animated, and uh, what was that other animated show you're in, the kids one? Dino Trucks. It's for the little kids, but it's, it's like when I was a, well, I think parents, parents will like it too, but it's like uh, big dinosaur trucks. It's based on a, a series of books. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember watching those kinds of shows with my kids. Oh, God. When yeah. I was a, if I was a seven to eight year old boy, back again, I would be all over the show. Yeah. And, oh. But, you know, the key is to get the parents to like it too. Yeah. Is it that that kind? I don't know. I'm not a parent, but oh, okay. I I like I watch the episodes and like them. And you like them, so yeah. there you go. You're a grown up. That's yeah. what I mean. Yeah, a grown up. I'm a grown. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I don't feel like a grown up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, thanks a lot. Oh, we got to say uh, sad news today. I I heard of the passing of Mark Dennison, who ran Laugh Lines, who who uh, m- managed Laugh Lines for years. It was one of the first stand-ups I ever saw oh, no. in the early 80s in, at Punchlines in Vancouver. Passed away this morning. He was a guest on this program back in 2005. And good guy. I saw him last summer. That was the last time I saw him. So I just heard that. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. So, but life goes on, doesn't it, Fred? It does. All right. Just funny how that happens, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you can't do anything about no. it. But it was great talking with you. You too, yeah. I could have gone on longer and longer. Yeah, that flew by. I know. Okay. Thanks, Freddie Wanick. And uh, we'll be back next Sunday night, 11 o'clock. Good night. As always, good night.